What's going on, Doombots? Tony Skinjili here with a video about farming at pretty much any level of doing anything. Now, there's three different things you can farm in this game. The first is experience. You can farm levels on your character. You're going to find out that you don't actually have to. Your characters are going to level relatively easily, uh, roughly at the rate of one level every four minutes played. So yeah, you can absolutely rush to get to level 50, but most characters are completed at about 20 to 30 somewhere in that range because you have all of the correct skill points in or your character's doing the things they're supposed to do, their abilities are unlocked, you can move on. So I don't really think rushing to level 50 matters. Also, there is absolutely nothing in this game that requires you to be level 50 to do. Everything is based exclusively on power, which is based only on your gear, your uh, item slots, your ISO weights, and of course, whatever your legendary or exotic artifact is. So we're not gonna talk about farming levels, uh, basically, just run missions, you will hit there in time, not a big deal. The other two things you can farm in this game are gear and resources. There are missions that are specifically great for making sure you're getting uh, good gear drops. Usually those are the longer missions, like the hives, where you're killing a lot of uh, monsters that will maybe drop more or less types of gear. Um, and you can always get good gear drops out of random chests. So if you're specifically trying to farm gear, especially solo, you want to make sure you're doing missions that are easy for you to do. With multiplayers, do the extended missions like Hives. You're going to make sure you get not only the gear from the characters to drop, but the end rewards tend to give higher drop rates on things like legendaries and good epics that you might be able to spec or upgrade a little bit, especially at higher levels. Uh, power levels, of course. And of course, resources being the last thing. Resources are used to upgrade gear as well as buy stuff from the uh, free store. These are three different things you can target, farm, and work on. Now, what I'm going to show you today is the way that I farm for both gear and resources, not only on endgame characters, but on pretty much everybody. As you can see, my Thor is not quite ready for endgame yet. I've been working him up over this kind of video series I'm doing, just to show a little bit of progression and how I'm doing it. And I have a strategy for making sure I'm getting the right amount of gear. But specifically, Thor and Iron Man are absolutely phenomenal for farming these kinds of things. And you're going to see why. I'm going to do a forest vault that I got my one or two daily vault keys for um, earlier today. I'm going to start at challenge level two. And then a little bit later, you're going to see me do it at challenge level four. And I'll let you decide which one of these farms was more worthwhile, more time efficient, more beneficial to you. As a player, maybe as you get a stronger version of a character, the challenge level 4 becomes a little bit easier, but you'll see. I'm not going to have to do too much to explain to you what's going on. So I'm going to start this video. This is pre-recorded. I want to be able to review it and talk about it. I'm going to quickly look over my Thor, show you that I haven't even spent the skill points, like 10 skill points letter, so he's functionally level 34. Don't need to. My gear, just kind of running through it real quick to show off. This is where they are. We're going to jump straight into the mission. You'll see launch, it shouldn't be any big deal. And uh, I'll skip through this because you don't really care for this. And we'll go straight into the load screen of the mission. All right, so we skip through it. Uh, Thor has loaded up. Uh, you're gonna see me just launch up. Now this is one of the reasons why I like Iron Man and Thor. They have flight. Flight is the farm setup for these characters. Now obviously if you're farming for some stuff like exotics, you're gonna have a rough time doing it. But you're gonna watch me just run as quickly as I can through as much as I can, just kind of avoiding the attacks of everybody, not really paying attention to monsters because they don't actually do anything. Run through here, open this door, open the first chest, and let's see what we get in this first chest. Right? Could be anything, even a boat. You know how much we want in one of these. First chest open, arbitrary piece of gear, 30 units. Anything else? Nope, that's it, cool. On to the next one. You're noticing I'm not bothering with monsters. I'm not bothering with uh, anything other than objectives. We're going to run to the next chest on this mission. Now, each vault has its own. I prefer the desert vault one uh, if I'm lucky enough to have a key. But I don't. I have forest and snowy tundra. I do not like snowy tundra at all. Oh, legendary. So I got a collectible, some 30 units, and a legendary. Sounds great. Right, how long am I into this? About 20 seconds, 30 seconds into this. I'm gonna move on over to the right. Now these maps are gonna roughly be the same every time you go in, especially on vault missions specifically. So I'm gonna power through. 
Let's see what's over here. Now I see there's two different points here. I'm gonna go over here. I know for a fact this is an elite. Elites have good drop chances for both upgrade uh, modules, which you need for high-end level gear, as well as you know item drops. It's gonna be no issue at all for me to obliterate this guy at challenge level two. So I'm gonna banish him to the Shadow Realm as quickly as I can, and then make sure that I get something out of this. Oh, and it's a purple piece. Not legendary, but I got that upgrade module, kind of useful. We're going to go over to the left eventually. Yep, I remembered. And there's just a chest sitting right there. So again, chests are the best thing in the game right now. Whether they change them, I don't know. Uh, but there's almost no issue with opening chests and seeing what you get. So let's see what I got out of this one. This is another epic gear and 30 units. So far I'm, what, 90 units into this mission. That might be useful for me in the future. Uh, we're going to just kind of run around. It's a little bit longer than I'd like it to be to fly around. Obviously I didn't quite know exactly where I was going here. So I'm looking to see if there's a cave or a secret passage. They tend to show up a lot in these kind of missions. There's usually kind of a circle. Pick up some extra resources if I'm already dirtling around. Now you can do that or not. Depends on how efficient you want to be. In general, I don't go out of my way to pick up resources, but if I happen to be near one, I have no problem. And I would recommend you stop to get them too, because right now my main character, I don't have any nanites because I've spent them all to max out characters like Iron Man and uh, Hulk. So. Moving on, you'll see, just kind of running around, still getting my bearings for this, and this is the first time I'm doing it on this map. Uh, so I'm getting a little bit used to where the points are spawning, but you'll see when we go through the challenge level four, that I'm a little bit quicker when it comes to hitting these points, which is all that matters, right? All that matters is speed. You are not fighting fights. It doesn't matter how strong you are. It doesn't matter what's going on. Oh, found a chest, right? No issues. Don't have to fight anything, got hit a couple times, come in, open this chest, let's see what's in it. Garbage blue gear, 15 plasma resources, and some Uru. Not as great as some of the other stuff I've opened. Oh, and an upgrade module. That's probably the best thing out of that chest. Again, upgrade modules are really important for endgame gear once it hits about level 130, because if you don't know how you progress your character in power, you bring, uh, you basically have a set of gear at 130, that's the highest drop rate currently for gear. You rank it up 10 levels, that would make your average about 140, and then you move on. Oh, here's another legendary. So we are tons of units pulling legendaries left and right. Does it matter about the legendaries? We'll find out at the end of the run. I'm not gonna look at anything right now because there's a secret to this mission, uh, and this what I'm doing here, that's going to be the difference between the average person farming the game and how to farm as efficiently as possible. Now you see I have two more question marks. So one might pop up as we go on. I don't believe it does though. You might spawn in and notice that you don't have any question marks on the screen. Don't worry about it. They'll show up. This is one of the last two that we have to come by. So I'm just going to run as quickly as I can to make sure I'm avoiding everything. Now I see the chest there, but I recognize this point of interest is one where I have to punch through either a wall, which would normally be behind this guy. I quickly determined that is not how this works. And also I'm fighting, which is not great. There's no chest in that room, so there's no reason to be here. I don't want to deal with these guys at all. Let's just banish them to the Shadow Realm, uh, send them to the Halls of Ahala, and complete this. Now this is a one of three different kinds of things that can spawn. This is the beat up one. There's one that you can uh, have to step on the pads. Usually those would be inside there. You have to go through that little corridor on the corner over there. And then there's uh, one where there's like tiny little buttons you have to push. Those are usually on a tower somewhere to the left or the right, like uh, on that side right there. So completed this, jump down, fly through, there is a DNA chest in here. I would not recommend opening DNA chests right now. Uh, you, DNA chests are not really good for items, but they are really good for resources. So I don't like to do that at challenge level two or anything like that. I want to make sure that uh, I always am at the highest challenge level because ch the higher the challenge level doesn't increase the drop rates on items, doesn't make it easier for you to get legendary or exotics. All it does is increase the amount of resources you get right here in these chests for these objectives. 
Uh, nothing increases experience, nothing increases any of that. Here's an epic uh, comic book. Now, comic books will kind of go into at the very end of this video and how important it is to be pulling them. You'll notice this is how I ended the fight. I just left. There's no reason to complete this mission anymore. I've done all I need to do here. We are going to now progress to the second stage. So I'm going to take a moment, show you the gear that I have and a little bit of a conversation on this. Uh, I'm going to equip all of the upgraded gear. Now that was obviously an upgrade. I didn't have that before. I'm just going to hold the button and see what I got. Everything here looks great. And I'm going to do something that a lot of people will tell you not to do. And I think they're wrong. Uh, they're going to say, hey, don't spend resources on the gear you get early. I say that's wrong because spending resources on key gear that you get early, specifically legendaries, increase your chance of getting higher gear quicker. And of course, the most important thing you can do in this game is get your power level high. So what you're seeing here is me upgrading a legendary to a point where it is significantly higher than all of my other gear. When I run this mission again, it is incredibly likely that whatever the next item that drop not only scales to my power, which has gone up by four points since I put all this stuff on, but now if I get a legendary or another item like that, it should be around level 65 compared to my other legendaries as opposed to around what my power level is. Uh, maybe I'll get one that's lucky. Maybe I'll get a nice purple gear that's about 58. We'll see as we go. But again, we're going to do the same thing except one little change. People probably have heard that it is incredibly valuable to you as a player to do missions at challenge level 4. You may even hear someone say, hey, you won't get an exotic unless you're doing challenge level 4. The only reason to do challenge level 4 is to do it because it's fun for you. That's it. There's no reason. As we go through this, you're going to see why. Keep in mind, my Thor is only... Four power higher than he was before. Again, didn't spend those skill points. We're going to fast forward through the scene and we're going to start the fight and you're going to see a drastic stark contrast between doing it on challenge level two in the roughly eight minutes it took me to clear that and what's going to happen in this one. All right, we are loaded. Everything's in. Kind of the same thing. You've seen this before. No real notes on this. We're going to launch off, go straight to the first chest we see, kind of the same way we did last time. Nothing major is happening here. Nothing new, nothing exciting, but you're going to immediately notice something as we move up. Because I'm doing this in challenge level 4, running down, every time I get hit, my health bar is taking about maybe a quarter of its maximum health. Oh, thanks for body blocking me, Thor. Uh, don't know why there's collision with my own guys. Let me just try to open this chest without doing... Oh, dead. Yep. All right, well, thankfully my AI uh, will always res me as soon as they can, so let's move on a little bit quicker. And cool, what did I get? Red ISO 8, 45 units. So I got about 15 more units than I did running it normally. And I'm down again. Why? Because they hit me once. So could I be fighting these guys and making it better? Yes, but that's not why we're doing this. We're not trying to prove that we are the mightiest Avenger. We are trying to get resources and gear so that we can complete builds. All right, next piece, no big deal. Just gonna run out, hopefully not get shot by anything on the way up here. Same locations, keep in mind. Challenge level two, challenge level four. Where the items are, nothing has changed. Sorry, got hit at the end there. Let's see if I can avoid getting hit here. Nope, try again. Oh. Lucky. All right, so that's an epic, and again, 45 units. It's more units. That's great for cosmetics and custom stuff and emotes and takedowns and whatever shows up in those stores. To me, units aren't that important. Uh, you'll see as we knock out a chest maybe in a little bit, we shouldn't have too much of, a, of an issue with getting slightly more. I believe you get maybe three per pickup on chests as opposed to the two that you normally get when you up a challenge level, but... Here we go, another chest. Keep in mind, I have not gotten a legendary yet. I'm gonna knock that out so I can heal a little bit so I might not get immediately destroyed. Comic book, blue, five star blue and 45 units. Comic book is great, I'm looking forward to that. There's the elite, ignoring him completely this run. I would do the elite almost exclusively if I was on a full party here. Keep in mind, if I was on a full party with the characters I have here, I would be significantly faster than the rest of them. Hulk and Black Widow would probably be reasonably quick. 
uh, Cap would so still be somewhere around that first point we went to, wondering why he doesn't have like, a motorcycle or something. Uh, and that's not a big deal, but Cap needs a speed boost. I'm just going to run straight to this point uh, because we've been there before. And specifically, I want to show you one of the reasons why challenge level four at lower levels might not be as efficient as you want it to be. Maybe you have a slightly higher drop chance. You actually don't know. Yeah. I'm just going to pick up some stuff here and show, oh, look, I'm getting nine every time I open it instead of I think normally I get six. There's nothing here of consequence. So I'm going to run in, try to knock some of these guys away. Oh, can't do that. Everything stuns me in this game because of course it does. Miss with a hammer. And how far do I have to go before I'm downed? Let's take a heroic orb. Maybe I can get something done. Hulk's doing something over there. One down. Two down. This should be easy, right? We have no problems here. I'll take that hit right over there. Drop down. Everything's okay. Just make sure these guys aren't hitting me dodging stuff as I see the little arrow comes up and I'm down and I'm dead because <laughs> I've been knocked down three times in single player which doesn't need to exist so okay we're gonna just kind of fast forward through this you know I mean I can do it physically I'll show you me fast forwarding and not like starting a new video hey look here we are fast forwarding going right back to the beginning really nothing happening here I got shot out of the sky just trying to get myself right back to where we were supposed to be. Cool. We're trying this again with a fresh new three lives. Just to see if I can... Oh, that's not who I wanted to hit. Thanks, Thor. I want to punch the other thing. Downed again. This is the issue with doing it on challenge level 4. So far, I haven't gotten as good gear as I did doing it at challenge level 2. But I've been downed. And I'm pausing it here to tell you. Uh, this is absolutely, positively one of the worst uh, ways to farm gear at low levels. Regardless of what people tell you about drop rates and resources, you're just not as efficient as you could be. You're not clearing it quickly. The gear drops haven't been better or worse. Now you can say, Tony, you were just lucky on your first pass, or uh, Tony, I've had this experience, but the truth of the matter is the only way I could ever prove to you what I'm saying is true is by putting like an hour long video up and the people who are the most likely to be concerned about uh, what I'm saying being true or not are also the people least likely to watch an hour long video I put out. So you can choose to believe me or trust my my judgment when it comes to this and how I've been playing this game over the last week plus um, I'll let myself be down so I can pick up. I think this is the last time I'm down this entire mission because this is the hardest one to have to do, uh, and I, I have to actually land on the ground. There's another DNA chest. Now, normally I would open it here, but again, I don't care about opening a DNA chest on this character, just in case DNA chests do have a higher drop rate on something like the Zotix. I'd rather have it on a character that's 130, like my Hulk or my Iron Man. We're gonna run through this, dodge that, because I saw it. Uh, pick up that chest that's on the top of the tower that we remember from before. We're still looking for legendaries. Is this going to be the first legendary on this run, considering I got about two or three from the previous one? Yep, first legendary. Nimble, Spark, Breastplate. Excellent. It's only three star, but again, I'm powering up a character. It's probably going to be a decent uh, power level. We'll see at the end of the mission as I go back and talk about it. But this is it. This is it, guys. If you want to farm a handful of resources, I just found a random chest. Might as well open it and got a free comic book. That's probably the best thing to get out of chests if you're not getting legendary upgrade gear. Decent amount of fragments got picked up. The resources you're getting from these chests are relevant at four, but not worth the difference in time. Later on, as your characters build, after you've done this at lower levels multiple times and you've gotten enough legendaries with really good perks that might be able to help you, by all means, start doing it at Challenge Level 4. If you're in a party with people, if you and another Iron Man are, are together, or if you're playing somebody that has pretty decent traverse, uh, and I have another video of me doing this with Iron Man and Hulk, uh, I'll put that up some other time if you want to see. Kind of the same thing, except it was on a different map. It's the same thing. You're doing the same thing. You're just running around, picking up the chests, hopefully getting upgrades, which you'll find out at the end of the mission. Moving on. Now the map is telling me, hey, remember that guy over there? Yeah, we're not worried about him. 
pick up this last chest, came in from the other side this time, you'll notice the maps are do deviate slightly when it comes to where things are, but that's just how the tile sets spawn in the map. That has nothing to do with items. Items will always, or items or bosses or whatever it is, will always spawn exactly where they're supposed to. No question. Now there's one other thing I'm gonna do here, and it, it, it's, it's not necessary, but I like to do it when I finish the mission around this point anyway, and it's because completing objectives in this game gives you a flat amount of XP. And one of the objectives in this game is to discover the shield vault. So I'm going to run around, find the shield vault, open it up, and get an amount of XP. It wasn't quite enough to level me because I haven't really been killing anything. So we're going to return to the Quinjet and go back in over and over and over. And that's how you're going to see me gear up a character. Now, I haven't been playing Thor too much. But this is the kind of stuff you're going to see as I play my Thor. Still haven't spent any skill points. Let's see what my gear is. Anything here? So I upgraded that one piece to 65 earlier. And I got two power ranks up on everything. Here's where we can do kind of the exact same conversation. So this one I don't need. At this point, all I'm looking at, none of these stats matter. None of the abilities matter. All I want to do is make sure my power is as high as it could possibly be. I'm gonna look at all of the gear pieces that drop. I'm gonna look at all of the cool stuff I got. And I'm gonna talk about comic books. Now, comic books, you have to complete one of every one, but if you check real quick, you see right there, it says tier. The more comics you complete, the more boosts you get. So, for example, on this one, I'm tier one of five. You see where the set bonus is over here. Uh, it's actually loading in right now, so I'm sorry I froze it at that exact point. But they give you set bonuses. And then every time you tear it up, it increases one of those stats up. So even though you are getting multi duplicate of comics, it's not a bad thing doing this. They are going to increase your overall bonuses to your character. And this I found, and maybe you might tell me about a better one in the comments below, to be the most efficient way to take a character from relatively low power to relatively high power uh, in about an hour or so. Uh, not quite going so far as to say you can take a character from, you know, 10 power to 130 in an hour, but I know that if I run the challenge level 2 on this mission, if I upgrade the best legendary I drop to get it 10 points higher than all of my other gear, the rest of my gear just goes up, not only because of the overall power of the item, uh, you know, my, my power level, but even then, my power level was 55, and you saw me get gear that was 57, 58. It, it, ISO 8s, that kind of thing, will all raise your power, which will increase the overall amount of gear you have. So just every once in a while, maybe when I feel like I've run it once or twice and I haven't found much gear, I'll take whatever my legendary is, I'll rank it up about 10 ranks, and hopefully that will uh, start the backflow of decent gear as it comes in. But that's pretty much it. Hopefully this video was helpful to you if you're trying to power up characters, particularly Iron Man and Thor in the early stages of the game because these are the guys that be the guys that you use to farm pretty much everything. Iron Man can solo all content in the game, whether it's meant for him or not. Thor is a very close, similar second. He just requires a lot more very specific gear. And again, every character is usable, but this is the way to make sure that you're getting as much gear upgrades and resources as you can uh, for as quickly as you can normally run it. And if you happen to be you know, really great with Black Widow or uh, Hulk's jumping and avoiding attacks and getting it through, you could probably do it in about maybe 10 minutes instead of eight, so it's a little bit less efficient, but it is more efficient than trying to solo a fight that takes five to 10 minutes, somewhere in that range, and only getting the drops that might occur on occasion from completing actual missions instead of just objectives. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, comment below, let me know if you have any unique or fun ways to farm character gear, or if you are already at max level and if you're doing something cute. I am trying to avoid talking about anything that's exploitable. Uh, one, because if it is exploitable, we don't want them to know about it. And two, because uh, I think it kind of destroys the game in general, you know? So 
uh, if there's something fun that you found. As of right now, it's already kind of a statement when I'm telling you, you don't have to you know, use the vault key to enter the vault. You just have to use the key repeatedly over and over. As long as you don't complete the mission, you don't spend the key. That's something that's incredibly helpful to me anyway. And you can do this on other missions. And as your power level goes up and you have the permanent uh, elite vaults, you can just do it on those at whatever level is comfortable to you. So have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangeli, and I'll catch you later.